I'm Andy Fisher, WNEW News. At eight minutes past ten, time for the Sears Radio Theater. That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a program of mystery with Vincent Price as your host. Here's a preview. He weighs eight pounds, 11 ounces. What are you talking about? That's what it says. It's about time that you could read a scale properly. Seven pounds, three ounces, one hour, and eight pounds, 11 ounces the next. Now, really. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. Our hot number is 1130, and we may have a hot number for you. A lottery ticket number, that is. It's the WNEW $25,000 lottery game. To play, all we need is your name, address, and phone number. Then if we announce your name on the air any weekday between 6 a.m. and 10 p.m., you win $100 worth of slot machine lottery tickets from the Empire Stakes game. You don't even have to hear it. But if you do and call our hot number phone line within 30 minutes, we'll double the number of scratchable tickets to $200 worth. You could also be one of our five grand prize winners when the lottery game is over to receive $1,000 worth of the new Olympic lottery tickets. It's easy, and we could announce your name soon if you send it to the WNEW Lottery Game, Box 1130, Grand Central Station, New York. Scratch a hot number, and it could pay off for you from our hot number, 1130. Quiet in the studio, Latherpuss Radio Spot, take one. Here in the romantic South Seas, Latherpuss Shaving Cream is preferred by uh, more... Mr. Director. God, yes, Mr. Latherpuss. I'm not crazy about this island thing. Uh -huh. uh, see, rough and rugged is what my shaving cream is really all I'll about. I'll change it. Take two. Fine. Here in romantic horsefly Texas, Latherpuss Shaving... I hate shaving. to be a bother. What now? But Latherpuss is so continental and stuff. Could the announcer... I'll uh, uh, change it. Take three. Yes. Here in romantic horsefly Texas... You know Number. what? If he could use a sexier voice... Sexy, Harry. Take four. Fine. Here in romantic horsefly Texas, oh, leather push shaving cream is preferred two to one. Yes, wonderful. Hope I didn't make too many suggestions. Not at all. Could I make a suggestion? What is it? Could he do it in Swedish with an Irish brogue and add some bagos oh. and a race Radio. You can do anything you want. Go anywhere you want. And reach anybody you want at a price that won't bust your budget. Radio. It's right on the button. A message from the Radio Advertising Bureau. This is Vincent Price. Listen to a celebration. Oh, they just telephoned me from the hospital. It's a boy. A seven-pound boy. Oh, hey, 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 cigars. How <laughs> about cigars? Sure, yeah. I got him already. Uh -huh. Coronas, Coronas. I'll hey, take nothing away. Oh, since hey, when do you oh, smoke? Hey, For free, I'll do right anything. Right. Oh, yeah. Here, Frank, have a cigar. Oh, hey, <laughs> Great tribal hey, custom. <laughs> hey, listen, fella. A first kid happens only once in a lifetime. <laughs> You're about to hear a story you may never forget. Its title is The Old Boy, and I am particularly pleased to present it to you because it was written by an old friend of mine, Peabody Award-winning playwright Art Obler. So get yourself comfortable, and in a moment, the amazing story of The Old Boy. Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, The Old Boy, by Arch Obler. Our stars, Elliot Lewis and Mary Jane Croft. Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value. I love to eat. But it takes so long to cook. That's why we both love our new Kenmore microwave oven from Sears. I can cook a five-pound roast medium rare in just 30 minutes or three strips of bacon in three and a half minutes on a paper plate. Bake two potatoes in eight minutes and cook vegetables faster than boiling them in water. That means less time in the kitchen. And more with you. Fast, clean, cool cooking with Sears Kenmore microwave ovens, all with automatic defrost. Choose the right model for your kitchen from the many styles available at most Sears retail stores. They wear them in Alaska, in Texas, 
in Maine. Wherever the territory's tough, the kids wear Sears tough skins. The toughest jeans in Sears tough jeans territory. Fashioned from a permafrost tri blend fabric so tough, kids can actually jump on trampolines made from it. Sears tough skins in boys and girls sizes. Now in latest spring colors, styles, patterns. Brushed finish too. You have tough kids. Sears has tough skins. Only in the children's store at most larger Sears retail stores and through the catalog. Sears National Automotive Sale. Now, save $36 to $68 on a set of four Sears Road Handler radial tires. That's great savings on Sears Best steel belted radials. And save on steady riders. Sears Best heavy duty shocks. The ones even Joey Chitwood's stunt team didn't wear out in a whole season. Now only $9.99 each. You save over 20%. Installation available at most Sears Tire and Auto Centers. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop. the first act of Art Obler's play, The Old Boy. The scene is a research department of a great conglomerate somewhere in Southern California. An excited young technician tells his fellow workers of a very happy event. <laughs> cigars! Cigars, everybody! Have a cigar! Here you are. Great, huh? Me, a father! That's... Hey, where's Professor Grayson? Well, I gotta tell him. Uh, no, John. What? Uh, perhaps you shouldn't bother him. You know how he's been lately. His child's so sick. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Come on, fellas, more cigars. I bought two boxes. Grab a handful of <laughs> Young John Ritchie is very happy. His wife has had a baby. A boy. It's a great moment in his life. Only three weeks ago, our baby was born. No, no, I've shut the memory out of my mind. But I must remember. Remember and tear the last pain out of my heart. I must remember. The baby arrived prematurely by a few days. I hurried home to Ellen. To Ellen and my son. Charles? Are you all right? Yes. Oh, I missed you so much at the lab. I'm glad it's over. Is it? What? What right have we to have a child? What are you talking we about? We, of all people. I know, I know. We're a little older than we should be, but after Charles, all... Charles, look at me. Yes? All these months, why do you think I've been so miserably unhappy? Well, I'm not sure what you... You know what I'm talking about. All these years wanting a child, and then when I knew I was going to have one... I didn't want it. Our work together, Charles. Twenty-five years' work. I, I don't understand. You do. You do. It's in your face. I know you must understand. Well, how goes it? Quite a vocalist, that boy of yours. You know, this is quite an experience for me. I haven't had a home delivery in years. We're most grateful to you. Not at all. When you can, come along. The nurse is going to feed the little rascal. First feeding. Yes, thank you. Ellen, please, look at me. I've known your feelings, of course I have. But when you remained silent, so did I. But must we talk now? Yes. All right. Ellen, scientists all over the world have had to make choices. I made mine a long time ago. Not with emotion, with reason. What sane thinking person denies that war is, is immoral or that any instrument of war is immoral? But there are necessities of sheer survival which go beyond those immoralities. Realities of today don't permit us to make the timeless judgment. Who can look into the darkness of unwritten history and say, this that I do here and now is right or wrong. Who? So we make our choices and we live with those choices. And who's to blame us? Or judge us? Or judge us. You've had a hard time. We've a son now. Think only of that. Shall I have the doctor bring him to you? All right. Try to sleep. Well, here's the father. What do you think of your son and heir? Look at him working that bottle. It's amazing. He's surprisingly large. <laughs> yes, indeed. What a boy. Weighed a little over seven pounds when he uh, <laughs> exited. Well, he looks larger than that. Yes. Yes, he does. 
Uh, nurse? M- Miss Carnes? Yes, doctor. How much did the baby weigh at birth? I wrote it down. He weighed seven pounds, three ounces. He looks larger than that. Uh, do you mind, Miss Carnes? I'd like to weigh him again. <laughs> Is that a fact? Yeah. I'll turn the scale, Miss Carnes. Uh, come, Professor. You might as well be a witness. Yes. There you go, young man. Now, don't you move for a moment. All right, Miss Carnes, set the balance. Yes, Doctor. All right. That's what's the reading. He weighs eight pounds, 11 ounces. What are you talking about? That's what it says. Eight pounds, 11 ounces. Oh, my dear woman, it's about time that you could read a scale properly. Seven pounds, three ounces, one hour, and eight pounds, 11 ounces the next. Now, really. But it's true. See for yourself. I will. Eight pounds, 12 ounces. No, no, it's 11. Eight pounds, 12 and a half. Good Lord. Eight pounds, 13 ounces. Doctor, what's happening? Eight pounds, 14 ounces. Professor, look. I remember I stood there thinking it can't be true. Error, misadjustment. But it was true. Horribly true. The balance weight of the baby scale spoke the truth. With each passing moment, the child was growing and growing, ounce after ounce, eating and growing, eating and growing. And this was my son. A good night's sleep. That's important to you. How your mattress is constructed should be important, too. Sears Best Imperial Elite Mattress has mattress within a mattress construction. The inner spring model has individually pocketed coils covered with polyester and urethane. The polymeric foam model has individually molded comfort islands for even support. Only at Sears. Sears Best Imperial Elite. A mattress within a mattress. A medley of moods above your windows, easily created with Sears Decorative Travers Drapery Rods. Finishing touches that you install yourself. Catches a rich look of fruit wood, antique designs, brass or copper, all with finials that are antique finished by hand. Chrome color rods gleam brilliantly, and Sears Trimension Rods keep a country sculptured wood effect always in view. All are strong, adjustable steel rods with plastic trim. Sears Decorator Rods, the crowning touch to your rooms. Why, after just a few laundering, my fashion t-shirts look all out of shape. Not so with Sanford Knit Fabric T-shirt Tops from Sears. They're 100% cotton, cool and comfortable, and treated with a process that helps these garments keep their shape, even when machine dried. So your fashion dollar keeps its shape, too. Sanford Knit Tops in Mrs. Sizes are Sears Best. And this spring, when color is headlining fashion news, you'll be thrilled at the choice of rainbow colors. All items available at most larger Sears retail stores. We now return to our play, The Old Boy. A child is being born, a most unusual child. And the father tells us more of the hours that followed the birth of his son. In 24 hours, the baby was as large as a five-year-old. Simple to say those words, but it's hard to endure them. Even in memory... Hour after hour, that little mouth eating, bottle after bottle, hungrily, rapaciously, not like a child, like a tiny beast whose only function was to devour. Ellen slept and half woke, always under narcotics, but the doctor and the nurse and I knew no sleep. Mm. Won't he ever stop eating? Doctor, tell me, I've never... All right, all right, Miss Carnes, all right. Sorry. You'd better go in the other room and lie down. But the baby will... The professor and I will be here. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Yes, we'll be here. Perhaps you too had better rest, Professor. No. She asked a good question. When will he stop that eating? There's a rational explanation for everything. This is glandular, so it must be self-limiting. Uh, the time, it's almost 8.30. I'll phone Dr. Carmer in a little while. Dr. Carmer? Yes, for consultation. He's an expert on endocrinology. Charles? Go to her. I'll stay with the baby. Yes, sir. All right. Ellen? How do you feel? The baby. Baby's all right. Is he still... Yes, yes. The doctor's right.
right. It's just an abnormal glandular condition, self-limiting. Anyway, we'll know for certain in a little while. He's calling in an endocrinologist for a consultation. No. What? No. No other doctor. I don't want my child probed and pushed. Oh, promise me, Charles. Promise me. No other doctor. I gave her my promise. In her hysterical condition, I had to. The doctor was quite unhappy about it. We argued and argued, hour after hour. My nerves went tighter and tighter. But it doesn't make good sense, particularly coming from you, a man of science. He's my child. But this is a case unique in... Yes, I'll say it. Medical history. Now, you have no right... Don't tell me my rights. I've told you and told you you will not call in another doctor. My wife refuses to have our baby used like a specimen. I will not say this again, is that clear? Professor, I must consider that you're tired, but I certainly don't like your attitude. And I don't like your face. Get out of here, you and that hawk-faced nurse of yours. Get out! Get out! Somehow it was better when they were gone. I gave Ellen sedatives. She slept. He did not sleep. He ate and ate. When the formula the nurse had left was gone, I quickly found out that he would eat anything that I gave him. Anything. He ate. And he grew. A day and a night, and he was sitting up in the bed. A baby, yet not a baby at all. The face and body of a ten-year-old. I had a difficult time then with Ellen. Oh, please, Ellen. Go to him, my baby. No, you're too weak. You've got to stay in bed. What's going to become of him? He's all right, I tell you. Then why don't you let me see him? Hold him. Because it's better that you don't. Not until you're strong. (laughs) It'll never be any better. Never. Why should you say that? I knew it before he was born. It's God's punishment for what we've done. God's punishment. Stop it. Stop it, stop it. There's a rational reason. There's a rational reason for everything. Oh, it's God's punishment. The rational Professor Grayson went in to see his son. To feed that endless hunger in him. I remember, as I sat there watching him, I began to think, was this punishment from from heaven? No, no, that was emotional, unreasoning. Ellen wasn't young, the shock of childbirth. She had an excuse for what she was thinking, but not I. There was a rational explanation. There was a rational explanation for everything. Good, evil, the greatest, the smallest, in the ebb and flow of the electronic charges that made all things. And then I had it. The new cyclotron I had helped develop. When it had been two, three years before, a protective shield had broken. That was when the radioactivity had reached me. The medical men had found nothing wrong with me, but somehow those reaching waves had affected the seed in me, the gene. And so this glandular activity of my son's had been accelerated. And his growth was an unrestrained thing, uncontrolled, like an engine running wild. Yes, the radioactivity to which I had been exposed. There was the answer. The boy stopped eating. He sort of stretched. He looked at me. I said, What is it? What do you want? He pulled himself upward from the sides of the crib that sagged with his weight. Suddenly I realized he wanted to be out of that baby bed. He wanted to walk. At two days. To walk. All right. All right. Why not? I'll lift you out. But it won't do any good. Walking has to be learned. Yes, yes. Why shouldn't you learn? I will put you on the floor. There. Ah, you see? It isn't easy to walk. All right. All right. Keep trying. Why shouldn't you walk? Why shouldn't you? kept on trying, pulling himself up, falling, pulling himself up, over and over. And when he stopped, he ate. That everlasting eating. And that everlasting growing. In two days, a child no longer, a baby 
yet a maturing boy. Sears Radio Theater will return after this message from your local station. This year, people of all nations are joining hands to improve the lives of the world's needy children. Through care, you can provide the families of these children with the means to grow their own food, to build medical facilities, safer water systems, and schools. Tomorrow's world is in our hands. Help make it a better place for all the children. Check or money order to CARE, Crusade for Children Overseas, Box 576, New York 10016. Business as usual. I was leaning against a phone booth on the Lower East Side, waiting for a call that would guarantee my next meal. Little did I know my next job would arrive on foot. I'm Sam Hart. A few minutes later, some guy staggers up to me. Hey, mister, can you give me a hand? Feels like my chest is about to cave in. He was sweating, breathing heavily and clutching his chest. I reached for the phone. I knew I'd come face to face with a big one. Again? Yeah, let's see. Nine, one, one. Emergency medical service. Got a possible heart attack. I need an ambulance here on the double. Another day, another job. Another round of the big ones. Seems like they're trying to knock off every other guy I see. Do you know the signals of a heart attack? If not, remember this. Sweating, nausea, shortness of breath, a pain in the center of your chest that may last two minutes or more. If you have any of these signals, call the emergency medical service immediately. Contact your American Heart Association for more information. They're fighting for your life. We now return to the story of the old boy. It is the third day since the birth of the strange Grayson child. <laughs> I remember the third day. I got Ellen out of there to go to her sister's. I told her the baby was isolated at the hospital. She didn't quite believe, but in her weakness, she went. And the others, I got rid of all the others. The gardener, the cleaning woman, I got rid of them. But that man, yes, I remember. I know I haven't been much of a neighbor, Professor, but, well, you must admit that uh, you and your wife haven't been exactly sociable. What is it you want? Uh, I, I don't want a thing, not a thing. I was wondering whether I could help you. Help? Well, Anne, my wife, thought that perhaps I should, uh, you know, uh, volunteer my services. What I'm trying to say is, could I help you with the lawn? I know you've had that Chicano fellow, but I've just had my mower overhauled, and it starts at one pull. Really, I'd be happy to cut your lawn for you. Okay, it, the way you stared, didn't you hear me? Just go away. What? I said it in simple English. Just go away. My son on that third day, the hugeness of him. He could stand now, and when I came into the room, he was there by the window looking out. His eyes, large, looking out of the window at a world in which he had been less than 75 hours. It was an unlined baby face, yet his eyes, as he looked at me, at the things that were beyond the glass, were full of puzzlement, full of great wonder. The telephone rang. Yes, I remember. Yes. Hello, is that you, Professor? Grayson, is that you? Yes. We've got a bad connection. Matthew's here. We've got a troublesome problem that needs your good offices. When are you coming in? Oh, I don't know. I beg your pardon? What is it? Is is Mrs. Grayson all right? Yes. The child is ill? Is that the reason? No, I... no. The child's all right. Why do you keep annoying me? I, I can do nothing. Really, Grayson, I'm sorry, but the Pentagon has been after us, and we do... No! I 
I remember I cut Matthews off in the middle of a word. Words didn't matter, none of them. All that mattered was my son. I went to him. He was still at the window, staring. His eyes turned to me, and then he spoke. His voice, a baby's babble, but all in three days, a child no longer. I, I don't know what you're saying, boy. Come, eat. I brought you more to eat. And as he ate, I remember I sat there, watching and thinking. Thinking of what might have been. The sun that could have been. A child that was a child. Father, let's play. Let's hike. Let's run. Just a boy. Father, tell me, why is this? Why is that? Tell me. Help me. Needing me. A boy. Not a thing that ate and ate. No. He needed me. More than any normal child needed a parent. A thousand, thousand times more. I remember I sat there thinking of what might have been. And the doctor came back, full of agitation, full of questions. I couldn't stay away any longer, Professor. All these hours, I haven't been able to concentrate on anything I was doing. How is the child? Has he stopped growing? Can I see him when... I don't think so. Now, look, I realize that I lost my temper. But again, I say you're a man of science, so let's view this matter objectively. I give him my word, I haven't even discussed this with anyone else. Please, let me see him. He's... He's dead. Dead? When? When did it happen? Hours ago. Please. I have nothing more to say. Oh, you certainly have. There's the matter of a death certificate. Do you understand the death certificate? Now, I must see the battle. No. Get out. Out! When he was gone, I sat there. So very tired. And then... Yes. Yes, I'm coming, doctor. I'm coming. What do you want now? I told you that... Yes, wh... Oh, Mr. Matthews. Uh, Professor Grayson, may I come in? No. Well, yes. Yes, of course. Thank you. If, if you'd come in here, please. I reported your telephone. It apparently has been out of order for some time. We've been trying to reach you. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Uh, aren't you going to sit down? Oh, I... Yeah, I beg your pardon. Yes, indeed. I always say that when two men face each other eye to eye on the same level, matters can be quickly resolved. Now then, to the point... You and your wife have had a long and honorable association with our organization, and I realize that unusual circumstances result in, uh, shall we say, unusual reactions. I don't know what you're talking about. I am talking about parenthood at, uh, shall we say, at a rather mature age. I realize that such a circumstance can be quite traumatic for the parents, but... Your presence is very important to us at the laboratory, Professor Grayson. We have deadlines to meet, and to put it bluntly, we simply cannot understand why you have chosen to be absent all these days. Certainly none of us at the laboratories have a time clock perspective, but I can only repeat we are only a small part of a great conglomerate. And although your activities are remote from contract pressures, in the last analysis, we all have deadlines. I beg of you to cooperate. Certainly, Mrs. Grayson must recuperate, but will you cooperate and join us, shall we say, at ten tomorrow at our usual report session? I sat there listening to the little man prattle, and all the time my heart pounded under the pressure of frightened blood. What if my son suddenly made a sound, a cry? How would I explain that to this small executive with his simplistic priorities and deadlines? I remember I suddenly heard myself making wild promises I knew I'd never keep. Anything to get that man out of the house so that the door was shut behind him and my son and I would be safely alone again. 
Well, I'm very relieved, Professor Grayson. We'll see you in the morning. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, one thing more. Yes. Your charming wife, my personal felicitations. I might say that some of her associates are planning quite a welcome for her when she returns. Yes, indeed. Good heavens, I really have been quite remiss not asking you this. How is the child? Doing well, I'm sure. Doing well. I remember the next day, the infernal telephone. Always the telephone. Charles, isn't there any news from the hospital? How is he? How is my baby? I've checked the death certificates, Grayson. There was none issued. You lied to me. Where is that boy? Charles, I want to come home. If my baby's dead, tell me. Tell me. I remember my panic. How long can I keep her from him? In another day or two or three, she'd be back. She must not see him. The glass. Yes, I remember. I hurried to him. The window. Broken. Gone. The boy was gone. I hurried along the dark street, my eyes searching, and in me a tearing panic. If the police found the boy, they'd call him a monster. Put him away. That must never happen. He was my child, and the wrong was mine. I must find him quickly. Quickly. Boy! Where are you? Boy! Where are you? Boy! Then up ahead... Yes, he was there, up ahead, standing at a store window, his face thrust in close to it. As I ran toward him, I blessed the cold and the lateness of the night, for there was no one in the neighborhood street. And then... With his hands, just as I came up to him, he thrust his huge, bare hands against the plate glass and broke it. And when I reached him, with bloody hands, he was reaching in over the jagged glass, tearing at the loaves of bread in his everlasting, ravenous hunger. Oh, no! No! Please, boy! No! Please! Please, boy! Please! I got him home, and I dressed his wounds, and I fed him. While he ate, I was busy, too. I boarded up the bedroom windows. That night at her sister's, Ellen kept asking questions. I have to know, Charles. My baby. What's happened? What have you done to him? Ellen, you're strong enough for me to tell you. Tell me what? That the baby... I mean to say... Tell me. He, uh, he can't come back from the hospital yet, not for days. Oh, <laughs> but, but he'll be all right, Ellen. Believe me, he'll be all right. And at home, the boy ate and ate and grew. As I watched him eat, I saw it in twisting terror. How long could I keep Ellen from him? In another day or two or three, she would be back. She must never see him. Never. I took the automobile out of the garage. I fixed up a bed. I took him out there. And there he stayed. Eating and growing. Eating and growing. <laughs> Oh, here I go again. It's time to rent one of those steam-type carpet cleaners. Why rent? Now Sears puts power in a carpet cleaner you can own yourself. The power spray from Sears for easy home carpet cleaning. Power spray sprays hot water into your carpet, then sucks up the dirty water. You can see the dirt you get out. Dirt you didn't even know was there. The Power Spray Carpet Cleaner, a convenient carpet cleaner you can own yourself. Available at most Sears retail stores. Kenmore. Solid as Sears. Sears National Automotive Sale. Now, save $36 to $68 on a set of four Sears Road Handler radial tires. 
That's great savings on Sears Best steel belted radios. And save on steady riders. Sears Best heavy duty shocks. The ones even Joey Chitwood's stunt team didn't wear out in a whole season. Now only $9.99 each. You save over 20%. Installation available at most Sears Tire and Auto Centers. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop. Hi, I'm Bud Palmer, inviting you to the Sears Spring Home Appliance Sale. Come celebrate spring and save from $20 to $100 on selected Sears major home appliances. Save big on washers, dryers, ranges, and microwave ovens, refrigerators and dishwashers, sewing machines, vacuum cleaners, color TVs, and stereos. Celebrate spring. Save at Sears now. Sale ends April 28th. Dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Available in most Sears retail stores. Ten more. Solid as Sears. Vincent Price again, and here's the concluding act of The Old Boy. The father, in the agony of remembrance, thinks of the hours that followed. The days crawled into each other. They crawled like weary memories. The doctor thought I'd killed my son. I sensed that. And since he was my friend, soon he stopped asking questions, even on the telephone, and stayed away. <laughs> and Ellen wept and kept on weeping and thought that he was dead and kept on weeping. <laughs> and the boy ate and ate and suddenly grew no more. In a handful of days, boy no longer. In size, he was a man. A man pacing up and down in the prison of the garage. And I sat and watched him. It's all right, boy. It's all right. I don't understand you. No, it's no use. You've no way to communicate with me, nor I with you. You walk up and down. Up and down. Why don't you lie down and get some rest? Rest. Six days, you're a man of, of 30 now, aren't you? 30 in strength and vigor and, and want. I know what you want. But that's why I can't let you out of here. I can't. I can't. Pacing back and forth. Over and over. That day, and the next, and the next, and the next, and I watching him. A father watching his son grow into middle age in a handful of days. For each day for him was five years of life. And so, on the tenth day after his birth, he was older than I. And soon his steps were slow as he paced everlastingly from wall to wall. Ellen came home. I couldn't keep her away any longer. She was very weak. She didn't go out of the house. If I could have held him just once, my little baby, just once. Ellen, please. At least let me talk about him. I haven't got my baby, but let me talk about him. <laughs> Old age came quickly to the boy. Overnight, it seemed his hair turned white. His face became lined and wrinkled, as if life had been a long, weary road. Please, stop walking up and down. Please, rest. You've got to rest. If I only knew what you're trying to tell me. I don't know what you... I don't know what you... Why are you going to the door? Go out? No. No, no, that's impossible. I know, I know. You want to see the world. You've never seen... You don't know how 
In the garage. I've been wondering why you've been going out there so much, why you never put the car in. I went out there today. Don't look at me like that. I didn't have to open the lock. You must have forgotten. Let the door open. Charles, who has been living in the garage? I rushed past her and out into the fog, out into the yard. The garage. I saw. It was true. The door was open. I rushed inside. Boy! Boy! Where are you? He was gone. The garage empty. I rushed outside. Boy! Boy, where are you? Where are you? Gone. Into the fog. That baby. That boy. That man. Old man. All right. But my son. My son. Charles, tell me, who is it? Why are you so excited? Who is in the garage? The boy. Boy. Ellen, Te- hold on to me. Tell Let me. Let me go. I've got to find him. Charles, tell me. Standing there in the wet of the fog, I told her of the baby, the boy, the man. Oh, no. No. At first she didn't believe. No. Then her mouth opened wide, and suddenly she screamed. <laughs> And she ran from me. Boy! Where are you, boy? I ran through the fog, looking, looking. He was nowhere. But he was so old. In the morning, when I had left him, he could hardly move. Then where was he? Where? It grew dark quickly. The street lights went on. They were faint light in the fog. I could see no more. I could search no more. I came home. I went back into the house. My head... I had been searching for so many hours. I was so tired with this day and the madness of the 18 days that had gone since he had been born. It was finished. I could do no more. And then I heard, from upstairs, I opened the bedroom door, he was there, the old boy, in Ellen's arms. She was holding him, and he was talking to her, and as I came in, she lifted her face toward me, and there was no fear in her face. I found him hiding up here, Charles. Our son is home. He 
lived only two days after that, close to his mother, in her arms. It's all right, darling. It's all right. Should I? Should I get a doctor now? No. He'll rest soon. Why frighten him now? Let him be alone with us. Don't be frightened, son. We're with you. Your father and your mother. And so he rested peacefully in his mother's arms. A little old shrunken man. He died as he slept. Age, three weeks. Oh, those April showers are really coming down. So are prices during Sears Home and Yardware Sale. Like prices on lawn care needs. Check these. Save $2 on a 20-pound bag of weed and feed, just $5.99. Save $6 on Craftsman Drop or Broadcast Spreaders. Your choice, $23.99. Craftsman 4.5 cubic foot wheelbarrow, now only $44.99. Cut $10. Prices are really coming down during Sears Home and Yardware Sale. Available at most larger Sears retail stores. Sale ends April 28th. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. The word's out and spreading fast about the jeans from Sears Men's Store that grow beautifully. It's a sure sign they're fitting fine and feeling good. For the denim that keeps going strong a long time. Get them trim cut, regular cut, even get them pre-washed. The jeans that grow beautifully. Now at most Sears retail stores. Shop where America shops with a Sears credit card. You'll be able to choose from over 100,000 Sears products and services at everyday low prices. Just say, charge it. At Sears, it's satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. So visit your Sears store today to apply for your credit card. Or just phone toll-free 800-526-0444. Find out why Sears is where America shops for value. Remember, phone 800-526-0444. In New Jersey, residents call 800-652-2777. The Sears Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. The Old Boy was written, produced, and directed by Arch Obler. Your host was Vincent Price. Our stars were Elliot Lewis and Mary Jane Croft. Also heard were Virginia Gregg, Jerry Hausner, Byron Kane, Vic Perrin, and Peggy Weber. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI.